Forget it. I don't think he's going to be here. We're going to roll ahead without Malcolm. Let's try before we die, everybody. The Whiskey Review Show, where we randomly pull bottles and open them, no matter what we get, whether it's still in the store today or was only available 20 years ago. Um, so I'll say we a few times. Try before we die. Today, that will reference me and a bottle of whiskey. That will be us today. Um, so why don't we get right after it and find out what we're going to open and uh, review, drink, taste today. Here we go. It's always exciting. <laughs> it just got exciting-er. Um, what we know is um, 1 through 75 are right behind me, and since we've landed on 69, which is a significant number in my private life, um, because that's the year I was born. Um, we're gonna, we're gonna count down. We know we have 15 across the top, so excuse me while I turn around. 15, 30, 45, 60. Consistent with 69, I'm gonna have to bend down and get this bottle. 15, 30, 45, 60, 64. 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 5 across, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We have a 12-year-old Glenn Moray. This, I believe, is a Speyside. We have a Speyside single malt whiskey. Let me grab my seat. The Glenn Moray 12-year-old whiskey. So we're going to get right after this. I, um, this was purchased in the States. We have no UK stamp on the, on the back. This is a commonly available bottle to this day, everybody. I feel pretty sure I've had this more than once, but I can't recall much about it. We're going to get an opening breathing. Probably pull a, uh, pull a book and see what we see. Here we go. The Glen Murray 12-year-old Speyside Single Malt Scotch Whiskey. Bottle 69. It's dusty. I don't know if you can see that. <gasps> we had a bottle foil failure. I think we'll just peel it up over the top. There we go. Right, we don't script these, right? This is it. You have to roll with whatever comes. Here we go. Okay, we have freed the cork. That was nice. It had an element of potency to it. But let's all channel Malcolm. Lively. Glen Murray, established 1897. I get a double pour, right? <laughs> Sorry, Mel. So, the Glen Murray. Let's see if there's anything easily accessible on this bottle for information. Again, I think they believe Superman reads these labels with his uh, super eye vision. But what we have is a 40% ABV, Glen Moray, established in 1897, the 12-year-old. Let's just see. This should be in the book. What could we learn about the Glen Moray? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, Glen. Glen T, Glen M, oh. Glenmore, so this should be after Glenmorangi. Lots of Glenmorangi. Uh, is this going to be one of these odd ones? Hmm. Where because it's two words, it falls in a different order. Back in the day, Google in the book was called the index. So we'll go right to that Glenmore, page 77 and 235. I bet we're in the 230s. Oh yeah, these are the double G's. Glenn Grant, Glenn Moray. What do we know? 
Hmm. Grapey notes. But let's go right to the 12 year old. It's here. Here it is. 12 year old. Soft. Pears. Walnuts. Fresh oak. Smooth and oily. Beeswax and honeyed. So they're saying it's a softer yellow color. I believe them to be accurate. If I was, is there anything significant about the distillery that I would share with you? Hmm. Glen Moray was converted into a distillery in 1897, established 1897. Before then, it was a brewery. When they distill and they make whiskey, all whiskeys actually begin as a beer in the process of their initial fermentation, and they make a wort and then it comes off. So that makes sense that it was originally a brewery. Um, acquired by its present owners in the 20s and expanded in 1958. Its whiskeys are admired but have never enjoyed great glamour. Interesting. And they have the Elgin Classics range. And if I recall correctly from a WTF episode, there was discussion of some of the Glen Moray's um, being pursued as an afternoon drink with salads and whatnot, trying to launch into the, and forgive me, it's 2022, but in the reality was trying to watch into, launch into uh, attracting women um, to have whiskeys with their salads at lunch. This is not part of the Elgin Classics range, but this is their 12 year old. So they have set a soft yellow color. I absolutely agree with that. Very soft yellow. Uh, this would be probably uh, a very light hay or a straw color. So why don't we see what it smells like? They have asked, oh, it's gone. I think they said something about pears and walnuts on the nose. And I like to do the ring. On the nose, the Glen Murray 12. I'll agree with the walnuts. I'll agree with that idea. Subtly nutty. Oh, there is something fruity in the, not in the citrus range, but more in that apple -y pear, um, but not recognizable as a green apple. So absolutely, could absolutely be a pear. Not the biggest pear fan, um, but I say that, but many times when I've ended up having a pear, I'm like, oh, really, that's, that's not too bad. Hmm. Well, I feel like it only makes sense to channel Malcolm. What would Malcolm have to say? He would play back and forth with me. He would offer some comments about what he's noticing. And since he's not here, I don't want to delay my tasting. I've got a little thirst on. The Glen Murray 12 year old Speyside single malt Scotch whiskey. This bottle has been here for a few years for certain. This is a 40% ABV. Was there something on the front? Uh, again, such super small words. Here we go. Oh, oh my gosh, that nuttiness really developed. It is almost as if you're drinking extract of walnut, um, you know, in the very subtle end of the scale, but unmistakably so. That's very interesting. thinking of where I would enjoy this besides right here in this moment. This does potentially lend itself to sort of a, a walnut raspberry vinaigrette with a salad. So um, interestingly enough, this idea of this light midday, early evening whiskey that Glen Murray um, is seeking out that market share, um, this particular uh, expression really lends itself to that idea. I'm a uh, I'm really impressed with the nuttiness in this whiskey and how obvious its presence is. Wow. You know, I'm not, I'm not 
wow and a stunned, oh my gosh, this is like a, the best I've ever had, but I'm really wowing the obvious nutty characteristics in this glass. I'm just gonna take one quick second just because I remember the page number. It was in the 230s and I just wanna just explore just quickly if they had anything else that now rings a bell. Glenn Moray, 12 year old. Pears and cream. No, I don't pick up on any of the mint. Raisins, fresh oak, soothing warmth. I'll agree with that soothing warmth. What I have is a finish that, that dissipates quickly, but it does travel about to the, the button on my shirt that is doing its job. Unlike this button, which is relaxed. Hmm. I'm pretty happy with this Glen Moray 12 year old. You know, we don't talk about um, price points here on the show. Um, there's an element of, I don't know what the word would be, but um, it might be akin to jerkiness or something. So we're not here to explore the cost range, but I would just say this. I absolutely know that these Glen Moray's in the um, 18 and under um, age statements are very um, affordable. Um, and, and, and this one is well worth your dime, for sure. Um, but I'm going to pair it with something that was a gift uh, from a friend of the paintball team. And is um, we're trying to recruit for the show a little bit more. Uh, Lemonade, this is for you. Um, who, who brought some um, chocolate to us that I've been holding on to for a little while. This is Peruvian Flake chocolate. So I'm going to have a little uh, bite of some Peruvian chocolate and pair it with this um, nutty whiskey with um, some hints of pear. Mmm, it's a hard chocolate. Oh, it's a flake. Oh, that's cacao all day. 40% cacao. All right. That's a nice chocolate lemonade. Thank you. This should go well with this walnut whiskey. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Midday. I'm on holiday. It's the weekend. Another for me and my friends. I would order this again. Mmm. The, the alcohol is not present, it's not penetrating, it's not something that is um, developing at all. This is a nutty um, whiskey with hints of pear, matches well with this Peruvian 40% uh, cacao chocolate. Um, there are no medicinal qualities. This is unpeated all day, absolutely no question marks there. This is smooth. A, um, a tapered finish that ends about here. As I sit, having had my sip, uh, uh, you know, 40 seconds ago, there are no remnants left at all uh, in my mouth. This is easy drinking, very smooth, yet with recognizable nutty characteristics. Um, it's a nice whiskey, and I know the price point, and it's an excellent whiskey for its price point. I don't think you'd go wrong having that around. And this would be a great whiskey to share with somebody who's afraid of scotch and they've never tried it. They're just afraid of it. This would be a nice whiskey for them. So that's our, uh, that's our bottle pull for today. That's our review. And um, it's time to get on with our toast. And uh, we're going to just all move on with our day. The Glen Moray, 12-year-old single malt, Speyside, Scotch whiskey. Going to see what the crew has in uh, store for me today. Here's the toast. And I'm just going to read it because I haven't, pr I, mm, here we go. Here's to the nights we will never remember and the friends we will never forget. That's a good toast. I'll toast that all the time. Cheers, everybody. Mm. Yeah, I'm going to pour just a little bit of that for myself. Um, that nutty, wow, that nuttiness is so present. It's um, perhaps one of the most recognizable nutty whiskeys I've ever had. 
that walnut just jumps right out at you. I'm really impressed with this whiskey um, with all its factors. The nuttiness, the pairing with the Peruvian chocolate, of course walnuts and chocolate make sense, and its price point um, and its tapered finish, its afternoon capability. This is a, uh, this is a whiskey that I think people should have on their shelves for middle of the day, for friends who are afraid of scotch, and for when you just want to have a whiskey and you don't have to think too much about it, you can just enjoy it for what it is.